Hey traders, welcome to another video on my YouTube channel, Equities. Today is the second video about the global financial markets. And today we will be discussing indices. On this slide, I put my Twitter account if uh, you want to connect with me to be notified when I upload a new video. And I added my email address if you want to drop me a line to say hi or if you have any questions. I do my best to answer all questions uh, as, as fast as possible. And here is also my Facebook page. Okay, first let's get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. In brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. So with this out of the way, let's get started. So what do we have on the menu today? First, I'm going to explain what's the general meaning of the word index. Then we are going to see what do we mean by security market index. Then we're going to take a quick look on some of the world's major indices. And then we are going to discuss security selection, index weighting, index construction, index reconstitution, and finally index rebalancing. Okay, first topic. What do we mean by an index? An index represents the value of a collection of similar or comparable types of data, such as prices, values, quantities. Indices act as indicators, as, as we see with the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. This tracks the prices of some goods and services over periods of time to, to monitor the increase and decrease in prices, which is inflation. They measure the performance of financial and economic data such as interest rate, inflation, as I said, or output. In finance, it typically refers to a statistical measure of change in the tracked data. And finally, an index acts as a benchmark against which you can evaluate the performance of the indexed data over a period of time. Next, we move to security market index, which is the subject of this video. When we're talking about financial markets, a security market index consists of individual securities, also known as constituents or constituent securities, that represent a given security market, market segment, or asset class, as we are going to see in the index security selection. Each security market index may have two ways of calculating its returns, depending on how it's calculated. We have a price return or a total return. Then we have something called the divisor. This is a subjective and arbitrary value initially chosen to give the index a convenient initial value. This is chosen at the inception of the index and it's adjusted regularly to maintain this convenient value. Next on our menu, we are going to take a look at some major indices of the world. As I said, an index is a collection of some investment instruments. It could be stocks, commodities, currencies. And 
I want to draw your attention to important characteristics about some of the world's major indices, their constituents, and how they are constructed. I picked few indices from some countries. Let's start by the USA. The USA has the S&P 500, which is the Standard & Poor's 500 index. It's a market capitalization weighted index. We will, uh, we will understand what does this mean later on on the video. But I'm just trying to point out to the fact that not all the, the indices in the world are constructed the same way. And we know that in the S&P, there are about 500 largest publicly traded companies. Last time I checked, I think it was 504. So it's plus or minus few companies. Next, we have the Dow and Jones, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is also known as Dow 30. It's price weighted stock market index and it tracks 30 large publicly owned blue chip companies trading on the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. And we have also in the US the Nasdaq Composite Index. It's a market capitalization of over 2,500 common equities listed on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. And the index composition is nearly 50% technology and consumer services, healthcare, and financials account for the rest. The word NASDAQ, by the way, stands for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. I thought this might be interesting, so I decided to mention it. Then we cross the Atlantic and we go to the United Kingdom. They have the very famous FTSE, the Financial Times Stock Exchange 100 Index. It's an index of 100 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. It's also a market capitalization weighted. Next, we'll cross back the Atlantic backwards and we go to Canada for the TSX or the S&P TSX. The S&P TSX Composite Index is the benchmark Canadian index representing about 70% of the total market capitalization on the Toronto Stock Exchange with about 250 companies listed in it. And we cross back the Atlantic. We'll keep on going back and forth. We cannot go anywhere now, we are still locked down, so at least I'm doing it virtually. Okay, we go to Germany. Germany has the DAX. It's a blue chip stock market index consisting of the 30 major German companies trading on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. This is also another market capitalization weighted index. Then we move to France, they have the CAC 40. Is a benchmark French stock market index. The index represents a market capitalization weighted measure of the 40 most significant stocks among the, the 10 largest market caps on the Euronext Paris. Then we move east to Japan. They have the Nikkei 225 stock average. It's a price weighted index composed of Japan's top 225 blue chip companies traded on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. And in Hong Kong, they have the Hang Seng Index, HSI Index. This is free float adjusted market capitalization weighted stock market index very complicated I know but we're going to see what does this mean later in the course then in India there are two uh, major indices the nifty 50 is a benchmark Indian 
Indian Stock Market Index that presents the weighted average of 50 of the largest Indian companies listed on the National Stock Exchange. The second one in India is the BSE Sensex, also known as the S&P Bombay Stock Exchange Sensitive Index, or simply Sensex is a free float market weighted stock market index of 30 well established companies listed on the Bombay Stock Exchange. Then we go all the way west and south to Brazil. They have the Bovespa index and it's the benchmark index of about 70 stocks. It's weighted measurement index. In Korea they have the COSPI, the Korea Composite Stock Price Index, COSPI. It's a market capitalization weighted index. And finally, China. The SSE Composite Index is a stock market index of all stocks A and B shares that are traded at the Shanghai Stock Exchange. This is calculated using something called the Pache Weighted Composite Price Index. Simply, the index is based on a base period on a specific base day for its calculations. You divide the current price by a base price. This is what uh, Pache Weighted Composite Price Index is. I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. So now that we were introduced to some of the major indices of the world, let's see how security selection is done. An index constituents may be grouped based upon the asset class, if it's equities, fixed income, real estate, commodities, or the, the geographical region, North America, Latin America, Europe, Middle East, the specific exchange on which the securities are traded. Also, it could be grouped by sectors or industries as transportation or technology indices, by company size as in large cap stocks or small cap stocks, the investment style as in value and growth stocks and finally duration as in fixed income or credit quality let me now explain what do we mean by index weighting index weighting is the weight of each security to be included in the index let's say that we have an index that equals 1000 and we have four different constituents. If one represents 20% of the value, so we could say that this stock ABC, its weight is 20%. If another company represents 50%, so its weight is 50%. This is what we mean by index weighting. The most common weighting methods used in index construction is price weighting, equal weighting, market capitalization weighting, and some others that we are going to go over real quick. So now let's see the actual index construction and we are going to have uh, an extensive example to compare between these th three and see what are the differences. First one, the price weighting method. In a price weighted index, the weight of each constituent security is determined by dividing its price by the sum of the prices of all constituent securities. We are going to see this in details. I'm just putting some definition. So when we see the examples, you could remember what we were talking about. 
Next, we have equal weighting. This is simply each constituent security is given an identical weight in the index at inception. Keep this in mind because when we discuss something called a rebalancing, we'll go back to this point. Next, we have market capitalization weighting. A market capitalization weighted or value weighted index is based on the total market value. The current stock price times the total number of outstanding shares. To calculate the market cap of a stock, you multiply the price by the number of outstanding shares. If you're confused between outstanding shares, authorized shares, or the float, the floating shares, please watch my video uh, about stocks. The first one, the introduction, I explain all of this. The proportion of each constituent security is determined by dividing its market cap, its price times the shares outstanding, by the total market cap of all the securities in the index. Okay, so far? Okay. So, in constructing an index, what are the steps that we follow? I decided to add this slide before the examples, so you could follow along when I'm moving uh, in the examples. Of course, the first one will decide upon which securities we are going to include, the security selection. Then we find a value at a base date or inception. We find the weight of each constituent. We calculate the value at a future date, say after a year. And we compare this by the value at the base date or inception, and we could calculate the price return. It's very straightforward. I just decided to put it so you don't get lost when we do the examples. In the examples, I'm going to use exactly the same constituents for all three methods of weighting to be able to compare the returns between the three of them. Okay? First one, price weighting. We selected three securities. This is the very first step. Based on some criteria, the asset class, the size, the industry, we select the securities that we want to include in, in, in our index. So we decided on three securities, company ABC, MNO, XYZ. The price at the end of 2019 was 36, 55, and 18. And the price at the end of 2020 was 33, 58, 24. We are going to use the same three securities in the three examples we are going to discuss with the same prices, with the same end prices, just to compare. Okay? So, the first step, as we said, we find the value at a base date. So, the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, the sum of the prices, we take the sum of the prices, this sum, and we divide by the number of constituents. We have one, two, three. So this is, if you add this, 36, 55, and 19, it's going to give you 109. We divide by three. We have an index of 35.67. Okay, perfect. Now, what's the weight of each security? We divide each constituent price by the total price. Again, this is the total price here, 109. 
109 and these are the prices you see 36 36 and so on so this represents 33 percent 50 percent 16 or 17 percent at the end of 2020 we have the prices so we add the prices again and we divide by the number of constituents okay you're following then it's very easy to find the price return this is the current value of the index this is the value at base date or inception and we divide by the the value at base date or inception we get 8.5 percent return okay this was straightforward price weighting method we got the weights and we calculated the return okay next we have something called equal weighting and as we said in an equal weighted weighted index each constituent security is given an identical weight in the index at inception again the same one two three same prices and same end prices and here we added the number of shares the index is given an arbitrary value at inception say 10,000 because it's an equal weighting so each security is given an equal weight so we have a weight of a hundred we divide by the number of securities we said we have three so each securities weight is 33.333 percent same thing same thing now we need to calculate the number of shares for each constituents since all have the same weight so you just divide value by price correct the value is 10,000 now notice we don't divide the 10,000 we take just the percentage that this security represent in the index all of them are the same so it's 33.3 percent and we divide this by the price value divided by price this give us the number of shares for each constituent okay what do we do next now we can calculate the value of the index at the end of 2020 we have the number of shares and we have the prices at 2020 we multiply the price by the quantity by the number of shares these are the values that we get we add them up so we find that the value at the end of 2020 has jumped from 10,000 to 11,047 can we calculate the return now sure we can I know it's a busy screen I tried to organize it as much as possible so I hope it's uh, it's clear this is the price return here it's the value at the end of 2020 minus the value at inception divided by the value at inception this is the holding period return as simple as that and this gives us 10.5 percent remember in the in the previous method we got 8.5 now we got 10.5 same securities same prices same ending prices let's keep going the third one that we have market capitalization waiting now we are going to use the outstanding number of shares as we said to calculate the market cap market cap is price times outstanding shares so naturally 
the market cap will have a big effect. Correct? Let's see. Again, same three companies. Prices at base date or inception. Prices at the end of some period. And this is the new column that we are going to use, the number of outstanding shares. First thing we do, we get the total market cap for each constituent, price times number of shares. This is the price for the first one. This is the number of shares, number of outstanding shares to be precise. Here is the first company, second company, third company. We got <coughs> a value of 282,000. We can find the weights of each security at the end of 2019. This is the market cap. This is the total value. You divide this by that. You get that the first company weight is 25.5%, 23.4%, and finally 51.1%. Now, here we are going to use the divisor, the term that I introduced in the beginning of the video, to find a convenient number to work with for the index. Let's say that we want this number to be 1000. So we will divide 282,000 by 282. Straightforward. Okay. Next, we find the total market cap at the end of 2020. Again, we have the price and we have the number of outstanding shares. We got this value. So we have the value at inception. We have the weights of each, each constituent. Now we have the value at the end of 2020. So to find the price return, it's very straightforward. We just multiply, we just divide this by 282 and we divide by 1000 we get 16.2 percent okay now a quick reminder we use the same constituents same prices same ending prices but as you can see we got different returns for the price weight price we got 8.5% equal, equal weight, I mean, 10.5%. And finally, market cap, we got 16.2%. What I'm trying to say is the method of construction determines the price return. Although we have the same constituents, same prices, everything is the same, but the way the index is constructed, hence we get different returns. Can you see that? Because this is very important when you're looking at different, different indices and comparing a return, um, let's say you're checking uh, indices for the same sector, for example. And both of them are constructed differently. You would have different returns. You see what I mean? I hope this is clear. Okay, as I said in the beginning of the video, we have other methods to construct an index. We have something called free float adjusted market capitalization weighting based indices. Free float adjusted. Free float adjusted. It adjusts the market cap index weights by each constituent shares outstanding for held shares that are not generally available to the public. So this is not including in the outstanding shares. Outstanding shares, uh, 
if you watch the, the video about stocks, it's held by the public. So this includes the held shares that are not available to the public. These shares could be held by government. Let's say a government owns 20% of a company and 80% are public traded, traded. The outstanding shares would be equivalent to 80%. But there is 20%. So the market cap of this company is the value of the 80% plus the 20%. Also shares that are held by the founders, same thing, or employees. Next, we have fundamental factor weighting. A fundamentally weighted index or fundamental index is one in which equity components, constituents, were chosen based on criteria other than market capitalization. For example, it could be based on revenue or dividends, earnings, or any other fundamental factor. Next, we have factor weighting, a weighting factor index. It's constructed by giving giving different weights to the data included. It may assign a lower or greater weight to specific data to differentiate the importance of the data in the group. Let's say that these factors included some fundamental factors, for example. I'm going to put more weight on the revenue. The revenue is very important. But maybe other um, fundamental figures are less important. So I'll put less weight. You got that? Then we have volatility weighting. This is very interesting. I didn't know about this before I prepared this video. And uh, it's, it's interesting. It uses volatility to determine the constituents weights. To put it in, in, in simple wording, the weight of each stock is based on the inverse of its volatility. So if a stock is volatile, its volatility is high, it will have less weight. Yeah, interesting, I know. Next, we have minimum variance weighting. I'm sure you could guess what that is. It applies a rule based methodology to constrain volatility in an index but at the same time it will be maintaining exposure to the equity market good next we are going to be introduced to two terms the first one is index reconstitution we started with a number of constituents we have weights, we have values. Does this stay forever? No, it doesn't. There are two methods that uh, the, the index providers use to have the indexes consistent. The first one is index reconstitution. This refers to the process of changing the constituent securities in an index. On the reconstitution date, the dates are known, so there will, not, there will not be any surprises to the market. Securities that no longer meet the criteria, they no longer meet the criteria, are excluded and new securities are included. When this is done, the reconstitution will require further rebalancing for the index as this this turnover the exclusion and inclusion of securities will change the targeted allocation will change the way the 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 security selection was considered when the index was created or 
or during the last reconstitution date. Sometimes there is a committee, it's called the selection committee, this should be capital, but anyhow. Based on the index criteria, they decide to change the index constitution. Once the revised list of constituent securities is determined, the weights of all constituent securities must be recalculated. So you, you exclude constituents, you add securities, and then you remeasure, you recalculate the weights. The frequency of reconstitution is a major issue for wild use indices and the constituent securities. We will see why now. Because investors usually speculate, they, they, they try to forecast which securities will be added or removed from the index. The security in question if it's going to be added or removed could see a dramatic increase if it's going to be added or decrease if it's going to be removed in its price before it's actually added or removed the market is speculating so this has a huge effect on the prices of the securities in question Finally, why is index reconstitution implemented at the first place? To reflect changes in the indexed sector class size as a result, as you may guess, bankruptcies. If for some other criteria it was delisted, there was delisting, mergers or acquisitions, some types of mergers and acquisitions, and so on. And next we have index rebalancing. We have seen that the weights assigned to constituent securities at inception of an index change as their prices change. So, to keep the weights of constituent securities consistent with the index, we want to maintain the same weights for the constituents. Security weights must be adjusted or rebalanced. So, rebalancing refers to adjusting the weights of the constituent securities in the index on a regular basis, usually quarterly. Note, price-weighted indices are not rebalanced. We said here that security weights must be adjusted, that's why we do a rebalancing, correct? Now the price-weighted indices are not rebalanced because the weight of each constituent security is determined by its price. So, no adjustment need to be done. Can you see that? If a constituent price increase, its weight will increase. If it goes down, it will go down. So, there is no need for rebalancing. I hope this is clear. And for the market capitalization indices, most of the time, most of the time, they rebalance themselves. Why? Because as the values of its component rise or fall, the price times OS, price increase, so this value, the market cap, increase, right? The proportion of the portfolio, the weight in the index, will also rise and fall 
with them. But again, in case of mergers, acquisitions, liquidation, market capitalization indices will need to be rebalanced. Now, the last one is the equal weighted indices. These need rebalancing on a regular basis. The weights of securities that have witnessed price increase, price appreciation, will increase over time. The weights will increase. And the weights of securities that have underperformed, their prices decreased, will decrease over time. So that's why it needs rebalancing. I hope this slide is clear, because sometimes it, co it causes confusion. Okay, now we are just left with the closing notes as usual. You can come across indices everywhere, in every aspect of the financial markets. Knowing what they really are and how they are constructed will definitely help you in your analysis, especially when you're looking at the broader picture, at, at the market as a whole, at the broader market level. And as we saw earlier, not all major indexes are constructed the same. When you know how they are constructed, their values and the returns, especially the returns, will make more sense. You should know if the price or the market, market capitalization has a greater effect on the index value. Is it the price or the market cap that has a greater effect on the index value? And hence, you could evaluate, again, the broader market health and direction more efficiently. I think I've covered everything I wanted to say about indices. And I'm just left with the final note uh, of the subject. It's about the first video about stocks. On the channel now, we have three videos about options. I started from ground zero, and now we reached uh, option strategies. The first one was long call. So I'm doing the same thing with stocks as uh, I promised in uh, my equity channel video introduction, that we are going to cover um, a wide, uh, selection of topics uh, like stocks, options, technical analysis. So the first video about stocks should be uploaded within a couple of days. This is a standalone course. I will start with an introduction as usual and move on step by step as I did on the options course. Um, this is just a repeat. Yes, the fourth video uh, for options, which will be long puts, it should be up in a couple of days. Finally, as I always say at the end of my videos, let's all learn to trade like a pro. Thank you everyone and have a great day.